everybody, welcome back to uh, Get Your Mind Right Sundays. <laughs> we really still haven't came up with a name for the podcast, you guys, but we are doing it. Like we told y'all before previously, we had the podcast idea, and then as we sat with Coast, we just decided we were going to do a trio podcast. Hey, but podcast. Y'all, see our, y'all see our fancy equipment we got here, man? <laughs> you know what I'm so, saying? Coast, we got Coast over there working with us. Um, Coast on the ones and twos back there. Yeah, yeah. What it do, people? So we got a little uh, professional little microphone stands. How do you like the way you sound on the microphone? Man, category? I'm feeling like I want to scream. I want to sing. Song, I want to sing in here. <laughs> it's Sunday. Hey, let's talk about let's talk since we talking about Sunday. Let's talk about Kanye West's new album. Have you heard it, Coast? No, I didn't even realize he had a uh, released a new album. Yeah, it's called it's Jesus, a gospel album. Jesus is King. So it's straight like a Christian rap type album i ain't gonna lie i heard it as soon as it dropped and i do have one song on there that i just really really like and it's called closed on sundays so you might want to check that out chick-fil-a yeah he goes closed on sunday you're my (laughs) chick-fil-a it's pretty nice it's dope but it's it's kind of cool to see him on a different like light like He's really trying to give his life away to God after all the stuff that you've seen in the media with him. So yeah, I don't I know thought how that's that gonna dope. work with all the him being married to the Kardashians. You can't judge her. I'm just saying that ain't gonna when you when he uh, uh like trying to be <laughs> a Christian Bible going church going person and then married to uh that family who is like the total opposite. He going to try to, uh, what do they call convert? He going to try to convert them. I don't know. I think it's still going to work out. It looks like she supports him a lot and everything that he does. And, you know, she could use a little bit of his guidance every now and then. I feel like they balance each other out. So, I don't judge it. I mean, I feel like I heard something about Kanye West trying to, Keep her from dressing as sexy as she does. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It ain't gonna work. Like I, I believe it was some earlier in the week that came out where it was like a recording of him trying to tell her to, to tone it down. Tone yeah, it was on it the was, show. It was right? on her show. It was yeah. on on the it was on the Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Yeah, we were actually yeah. watching it because I love watching their show. So I'm a fan of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and it was uh, when she went to the Met Gala. I don't know if you saw her outfit, but it was like super tight, nude, and he was just it kinda, wasn't even that bad. It wasn't like you would never let me walk out the house looking like that, boy. If we so was going even... to the Met Gala, I'd be like, "Go ahead," you know what I'm saying? But, but if you was going to H E B, then you know what I'm saying? Hell no. But <laughs> you was going to the, somewhere like that. Anyways, the whole story was that he was like, "I don't know if I want my wife out here looking like that. Like young girls are looking up to you, and you know, you just I want you to be a role model." So that's where that came from. So yeah, we did hear about that, but. But do you do you think he started acting that way towards her because of his new religion? Yeah, well, yeah. because of his new album, or do you think it's uh, more because of just his maturity? Yeah, it's definitely his maturity and his I new mentality. His re- yeah, that he's getting into his religion. I think he was doing that church Sunday things where he was having the choir and they was all singing, and I think he caught the Holy Ghost. He felt the Holy Spirit, and it was undeniable. And he was just like, oh, no, I got to change my life. I got to change my music. And, you know what I'm saying? So You ever caught the Holy Spirit, Coast? Uh, I I don't believe I have. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen the light. I don't believe I have, no. And But you know what, though? Because if you guys have ever seen the movie of, uh, it was Tom Hanks, and he was, it was, I think it was the Da Vinci Code. Mm-hmm. I've seen it, but I don't remember it. Have you seen The Da Vinci Code? Yeah, a long time ago. So, in The Da Vinci Code, he's um, having to go to the Vatican and, and, and try to figure out some. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know, whatever. It's a whole thing dealing with, with uh, just trying to kind of dissect in religion and things like that. And when he goes to the Vatican, uh, it wasn't a pope, but it was one of the guys up there. They asked Tom Hanks. Uh, if he believed in God and while he didn't deny it he said something that I kind of feel 
is kind of on par with where I'm probably at with it. And he, his response was, uh, faith is a gift that he has yet to receive. And so for me, like, yeah, maybe I have never seen the light or I've maybe never caught the Holy Spirit, but it's, it's not to say that I'm opposed to the mm -hmm. idea of such a thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm still kind of keeping my, my mind open and, and just hopefully there's something that would make me sway towards. Have you caught the Holy Ghost? Yes, I have. But let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you, when you catch, when you feel the Holy Spirit, you get chilled in your body. You feel like, I don't know. No, that happened to me before at church. It's a but feeling. I, I don't think I, well, catching the Holy Ghost is like when they be jumping up and down. No, like, babe, ah. it's different types of ways that you feel and experience the Holy Ghost. So, no, you don't have to be jumping and, and, they fall and, and ground, doing all that saying. extra stuff at church in order for you to feel the Holy Ghost. Whenever you feel it, you'll know. Mm -hmm. it's, like a, it's like a fire that just you start feeling in your inside of you, like... Not literally like you're burning up hot, but it's just like a feeling like, you know, you're just like, whoa, you know, like it's just like a whoa feeling. But let's move on from that. The, we fu the funny thing is when we started the podcast, Coach was like, is there anything you don't want to talk about? I was like, I don't want to talk about religion. The first thing we're talking yeah, about is Yeah, religion. so yeah, I, that's why I was like, let's move on from that because we don't want to get too much into the religion or politics. Um, you know, because we do respect everybody's beliefs and we don't judge nobody. So that was just like a little topic that we wanted to bring up. But um, shout out to Kanye for trying to get his life together and, you know, setting an example for his kids. And he talked a lot about his kids in his album. So I respect that. It's a total different, like, new vibe that I'm getting from him. I didn't hear the whole album. Have y'all ever uh, purchased or just listen to a gospel album front to back before yes i listen to gospel music all the time and she i has, I, have that. I i yeah i have some favorite songs that are like when i know that i wake up in a good in a good mood and i just want to set good vibes i'll just start making breakfast listening to gospel music and the kids start singing with me or whenever i'm feeling down or i just feel like i need that lift i'll put a gospel song on so yes, to answer your question, yes, gospel music is my therapy every now and then. Huh. <laughs> that's legit. Uh, I listen to some. Uh, he listens to country. Uh, yeah, I like. Uh, <laughs> if heaven, heaven ain't, ain't a lot, lot like Dixie. Dixie. <laughs> I don't want to go. Oh, you gotta you know hear about it. That, right? You ever heard this song? <laughs> no, I heard you, know, you never heard that song? Never. You know what? Man, I heard it on the radio one day, and I had to download, put it on my Apple Music. <laughs> now I got it on my on my phone. It's you know when you put your stuff on shuffle sometimes, <laughs> mm -hmm. it'll just pop up. Uh, <laughs> you know what's funny though? This morning, last night, I had a dream. We were like doing something in the country fields or something, and that song. I woke up with that song in my head. And the first thing I did when I woke morning. up was play it, and he was like, "Huh? I like I like my woman to listen to that type of music." <laughs> I like that <laughs> so that was kind of funny. I already knew he was gonna say that. Yeah, buddy. What do you what do, what do you what do you usually do like in terms of therapy or like like how I just said I listen to gospel sometimes when I need that little push or that little lift. Well, if if I'm doing something for like if I need to listen to something to get me through, well not get me through, but just to have something to motivate me to do whatever I'm doing. You know how sometimes you're cleaning the house and you want to have something to, so you're not just dead bored while you're doing it. I put on a lot of times like R&B music, but not old R&B music. I put on kind of like new age R&B music that maybe has like a little hint of EDM to it. Like what? Uh, like say for instance, uh, there's an artist I like. It's a it's a female singer. Her name is Alina Baraz, and she's never heard her. Never heard yeah, her. she's Maybe. got she's got a real delicate, soft voice, but the way her music is produced and and the way it's engineered is, I I, I think you would dig it, Lucky, because uh, while her voice is soft, the beats 
are kind of knocking, and uh, the way they EQ, they put effects on her voice, like they'll screw some stuff kind of yeah. in the background, yeah. just for a little added uh, element to it. Yeah, it's it's dope music, especially if you're just in your own head trying to do something around the house. Yeah, yeah, it's really dope to listen to. I listen to Gucci Mane when I'm trying to get through. This <laughs> shit. <laughs> nah, that's another person that I can say, just like Kanye, they like evolved, or you've seen a huge change in them, and it's just it's 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 pretty cool to watch. Cause I used to listen to old Gucci Man, and now I listen to his new music, and it's just like a whole vibe. But just knowing his whole new character that he has. Y'all gotta excuse our children in the back. <laughs> yeah, we got a house full of kids. Is Gucci Man a clone? No, he is not a clone. He actually, did you watch the interview? He just did an interview with Charlemagne the guy. I didn't watch the interview, but I get uh, that there was some controversy involved. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It was funny. With the Breakfast Club, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, with Angela Yee right, and right. Envy. So, yeah, there was a huge little beef going on. I don't know. I don't know, but it's a good interview. You should watch it. I, yeah. So I wasn't. I never. Hang on. I got. I got. I'm running the uh, cameras here, people. So I got to remember to switch them back and forth whenever I start talking. Uh. Yeah. So I never subscribed to the idea that Gucci Mane was a clone when he came out of prison. Like you know, <laughs> his look was completely different, and people swore up and down that he's not the same person. That he was replaced by somebody. Uh. But when we see things like this where uh, it's an interview and he's referencing something that predates his uh, going day. to prison. Yeah, when he's talking, when he's recollecting from when he used to act an ass. Yeah. It's, it's like, how can you still, how, how can anybody call him a clone? Yeah. Because, you know, he was there and he lived through that stuff. And, and yeah, here nah, he, he was just on a different, he was a different person because when you're on drugs, you're just a different person. Then when you get clean, there are people that ain't used to seeing you clean and that's all that is. No, nah, but he talks about the whole clone situation in the interview. So, it, like I said, it's a good interview. Y'all should go watch it. Type in the comments down below. Let me know if you watched the interview, what your thoughts are on the whole situation between him, Envy, and Angela Yee because the beef is kind of... I, I know she just came out and she said something about the interview. She was like, I mean, Google him. Google what he looked in 2009. Like, do yeah. you think, does he look like I would try and holler at him? You know, so that was pretty funny to me. And then he backed door and he posted 2009 Gucci on his Instagram. He was, <laughs> so he was being petty. The whole situation is kind of funny to me, though, because he's a whole married man and I don't know. He's just, you know what I'm saying? He was just going with the flow. He was in the interview. He's being interviewed by Charlemagne. So that's just, they too grown for all that, you know? But is that his argument, though, that in 2009, Angela Yee wanted to fuck, but uh, in today, uh, in 2019, she's denying, she's denying it. it. Is that his argument? Like, yeah. is, is that really the point? Is there anything else behind him no. just trying to... Get that fact. No, I across? think well, he wanted to go to do an interview with them, and they denied him. They, she said that she didn't want him to come up there and do an interview. <clears throat> so that's why he was upset. Whatever. Right. Shit. What is it? Any publicity? What? Any publicity? Good publicity. Yeah. Good. Whatever. I don't know the saying. Let but me get some of M Ms you got over there. No, babe. We working. <laughs> yeah, she got a bag full of M Ms over there. Get one of that money. <laughs> Well, anyways, moving on, since we just tapped into Gucci Man and the whole beef with the Breakfast Club, I was telling Lucky that earlier today I actually saw a video of T.I.'s podcast. He had his wife, Tiny, um, talking or on the podcast with him, and I had asked him, well, I had actually asked him his opinion on this, and Coast, I want to get yours too. So, so what had happened in the podcast, um, I don't know how the conversation started, but Tiny ended up saying that when she was younger, she got in a relation. No, when she was younger, one of the older women in her life had told her, whenever you get married, you know, don't get married for love. Get married for stability or like security or whatever. So that was kind of funny to me because, you know, growing up, my mom never told me like get married for security or stability. But that's, like, a huge topic, like, in today's world. I feel like people 
or women or people in general just don't get in relationships because of love. I feel like they get in relationships because of the stability or like the benefits that you get from the relationship. So what are your thoughts about that? I think love don't pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> love do not pay right. the bills. All right. If two people are broke, I feel like they shouldn't be in a relationship. I feel like they need to focus on themselves and then go get a new relationship because you could do bad by yourself or you're going to be doing bad with two people. Yeah, but I may, I, could you picture a possibility where two broke people can really build each other up? Yeah. Yeah. And would you still say you can be broke by yourself or would you rather be in a position where you have someone to help build you as you're helping build them? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it depends, like, how old they are. You know what I'm saying? Because if they're young, then yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if they're, like, 19, 20, you know what I'm saying? Then yeah, I can understand that. They're trying to build together, and, you know, they, they're still trying to find themselves what they're going to do with their lives. So my question is, do you think that this older woman in Tiny's life was wrong for telling her that? Like, for giving her that advice, for putting that in her head that when you get married to find somebody to marry that is going to make sure that you're stable rather than it just depends because I mean I wouldn't want my daughter to marry somebody who didn't have a job and didn't have nobody you know what I'm saying but you, what if she loved him I know that's what I'm like I don't I don't understand I, I don't think I don't mm. think I would want my daughter to marry somebody who didn't have a job but she, oh but dad he loves me <laughs> that nigga need to go to work yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he need to do something with his what life. is your take on this coach so uh, that's probably where I have a disconnect because I didn't see it the way you just described it I don't have children yeah I don't have a daughter so the, when the question was posed, I'm thinking about it as just gold digger. Type two, shit. yeah, like <laughs> gold digger, like two people I have no, I never met, don't know anything about them. How do I feel about them getting in a situation like that? But when you say if you had a daughter, yeah, if I, and me thinking if I had a daughter, well, that kind of changes things in my mind. Uh, but initially, my thoughts about it are, yeah, that sounds like something a gold digger would tell somebody else. Coming up, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To to only marry for stability. Well, okay, if you're marrying for stability, let's say later down the line, and you're 60, 70 years old, and maybe things ain't as as clean and and just yeah. you know what I'm saying? Maybe the money ain't flowing like how it once was, and then somebody gets sick. You didn't really love that person to begin with, so. Uh, are you okay now with just saying, well, I loved you for, or I was with you for your money, I was with you for the stability, but now that that's not there, All right, go. and you sick on top of that, you know what I'm saying? Like, who who can really just allow yeah, but, themselves I mean, to be by in that time, if y'all been married all them years, you know what I'm saying, then I'm sure the it'll you'll grow to love that person. But I think she was talking about, like, in the beginning, make sure... You marry somebody who can take care of your ass. Like, would you give that advice to your kid? Like, or somebody like your nephew or somebody that you, or your niece, somebody that is close to you that you're trying to, like, I would, but not in that same words. Mm -hmm. I would, I would tell them, like, you know, you don't want to be dating no bum. Or, like, and you shouldn't even be thinking about getting married if y'all not financially stable. You know what I'm saying? If you're mm -hmm. not, if you're not financially stable, then you shouldn't even be trying to get married in the first place. Yeah, I feel that. Well, not to get into the religion or nothing like that, but kind of feeding off of this same concept of people getting together for a reason outside of love. How would you feel if, let's say, in America, it was the common thing for everyone to have arranged marriages? Oh, man. You know what? I don't even want to get into that topic because I was watching 90 Day Fiance yesterday. Y'all, oh, that, 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 that is my she show. She watching that show all the time. That's a good example. On 90 Day Fiance, a lot of them people, they be trying to get married to somebody and they don't even have their shit together over here in America. They be trying to, like, order a bride from some other country and bring her over here and they ain't even got their own house. They don't got their money right, but they got this lady done brought her over here from Vietnam or wherever. 
and she thinking she just been a hit a lick and get married to an American, mm. and then he got her living like in a where was he living in a, a in an empty firehouse in a firehouse <laughs> like an ex where firefighters used to be. But that's not the couple I was talking about. So there's this t- there's this couple that I guess on this show her name was Jenny and I forgot his name, but he was from India and she ended up getting her all her stuff packing and selling her apartment long story short she moved to india and got her a spot over there for both of them and you know he would be missing a couple days and then one day he shows up there was a knock on the door he shows up and he was standing next to this man and this man goes hello jenny i am his father wife's dad Mm. and so the whole drama spilled to where um, he was like, well, I never loved my wife. And he was like, it's just, you know, it's culture. Like, they literally arrange for them to get married. And you don't even have to love each other. So I was just telling him this last night. Like, that's so messed up that you, like, are forced to marry somebody that you don't even know, basically. You don't even love or you don't have no feelings towards. It's just, like, a whole money thing or like family thing or yeah I don't didn't know. he have to bring her their parents or the other people the other uh, Af- no that's a good that, that's the african couple it's just he had to come bring the, the girl's <laughs> dad six hundred dollars <laughs> no <laughs> so they have like a bride uh what is it a bride i don't know bride i don't know so this is a different couple he's talking about we're like going all over the place with this show long story short watch nine day fiance but it is a different couple he ended up having to go to kenya and africa and i guess the 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 culture there is you have to pay their family to marry you have to bring the the girl's dad or family some gifts and and some money or some and they have to accept that and so he only had six hundred dollars and the dad was like are you kidding me like this is like something you give somebody for a funeral like not for you know us to give our daughter away so yeah but talking about the arranged marriage i think that sucks like if you don't love somebody i don't think it'll work so yeah but like what if you was like in a very wealthy family very, i don't care what if you was in a, what if you were very very wealthy you had generational wealth and then your daughter and then you have uh, a, another family f- to know that they're very very wealthy and they got generational wealth you know what i'm saying and it would just make sense to keep your kids you know what i'm saying like the money keep it going you know what i'm saying because if not then and then your daughter goes and tries to marry a bum off the street and uh, you have all this money and you know what i'm saying that just I, that's the only way i could understand when the arranged marriages would make sense. No, Christian. And there was a whole lot of money involved. Look, you sitting here talking about some money. To me, <laughs> long if, story short. If, if you was a millionaire, of like super multi-millionaire, and your daughter wanted to go marry somebody who didn't have a dollar, you know what I'm saying? I would just feel a certain kind of way with well, that. Well, then, sweetheart, you're on your own. You're going to you're gonna have to experience this on your own. You know, I'm cutting all the money off, and go do, go live your life, if that's your opinion. But to me, I feel like you can't put a price on love. Like you can't, you can't do that. Like, just I wouldn't be able to do it personally. I wouldn't be able to just get with somebody just for their money because, in a blink, anything could change. Anything can happen. Anything can, you know what I'm saying? Just no, I wouldn't be able to do it. I have to be emotionally attached to you. Like it's not personally. I just have to be emotionally attached. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do it for. Yeah, but them ladies over there in them countries, they don't get no say so. They can't even. You know, they be all covered up, only their eyeballs be showing. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? In those air, air countries over there. <laughs> Kingston, what do you want, little boy? I already told you what I to know, do. I know, we know what we we're doing. We got cameras right here. Excuse my big head Jesus. son walking in here looking like, what y'all doing? It's, y'all, this is our first time doing this again, so um, we're trying our best to just go with the flow. So... Before we keep it going, make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up. <laughs> For us to be raw and uncut. Because, you know, we could have edited that part out, but we're just going to let it roll. You know what I'm saying? Support the cause. Um, yeah, we're really trying to just grow as we do this whole YouTube thing. And the podcast idea came up, and now we're doing it. 
So that was another thing. Kelly was talking about she should, if we should uh, put this on a whole different channel, but I think we're just going to keep it on this channel, but instead put it in a different playlist. So this playlist will, these podcasts will be in its own playlist called podcast or whatever we come up with the title for our podcast, whatever it's called. It'll be in its own playlist. I, I find it strange that we have yet to come up with a title for the podcast. I came up with one. Coach came up with one. She came up with one. We just can't agree on one. So my idea was Been True Podcast. And then Lucky and... I like No I'm Talking About Podcast. No wait, wait, about. wait. You can't, you can't <laughs> throw that one out. That was my idea. Yeah, that was Coach. That was <laughs> you gotta Coast. come up with one of the ones you came yeah. up with. Lucky had came up with Group Chat. I like Group Chat, but you know, somebody already got that. It was already a podcast called Group Chat, so couldn't use that. And Coach looking at us like, man, if y'all don't get y'all's kids together. <laughs> get y'all's kids situated. This, no, this is nothing like, like when I'm at my house... I live by myself. It's me and I got two little dogs. So <laughs> if there's anything that pops out from the corner, I already know it's a little dog. Yeah. <laughs> but when I see some uh, like right now, human walking yeah, around, <laughs> Houston just popped up right now. He had something in his hand and he was kind of like shaking around like this. I see that out of my corner of my <laughs> eye. I'm like, well, what is that? Oh, yeah, that's right. They got kids. <laughs> yeah, you guys, the struggle is real. We just got back from Dallas, if y'all didn't know. So shout out to D Town for always showing us love. Um, but we had such a hard time with the kids, you guys. Like for real, we had to go take. Well, we went and took our fan out to dinner because we said the first person who got a hundred thousand points on LuchaGang.com, we take him to dinner. And I ain't gonna lie, I set the bar high, hundred thousand points, thinking that it would take a really long time or that someone really wouldn't even get a hundred thousand points. <laughs> but it happened real quick. So so we I had to keep my end of the bargain and drive out there to Dallas and, and take our fans to dinner. And we did with our children, because you know they all part of the show too, so we had to take them too. And Houston was just screaming, throwing himself. He did not want to sit in the high chair. He was trying to walk under the table. He was trying to go slap the lobster tank. It was bad, you guys. And I'm sitting here looking at Lucky like, how the hell are we going to have another baby? And we can't even keep this one, you know, Yeah, I felt control. bad for, the, for our fan that was sitting there. She was like, uh, like we couldn't even talk because Houston was just screaming. Mm -hmm. And then she didn't even like seafood. And so we tried... Uh, but huge shout out to her. We already gave you a shout out, but shout out again, Malena, because she had patience with us and we did the thing. We did our thing. Get that little boy some ice cream and take him to the room. So, do you guys ever remember a time where you thought you didn't like seafood? But no, I always like seafood. Because <laughs> me, I was that way when I was younger. I was like, no, nah, I don't like seafood. And then one day I actually ate proper seafood and it was good. And yeah. I, from that point on, I was like, hey, yeah, so, wrong so, with so, yeah, I, I don't like frozen seafood. Like that's, that's some like Joe's Crab Shack and stuff like that. Like I don't, I, I don't really like that. Yeah. Um, but the seafood got to be fresh, you know what I'm saying? And I like it, but I don't <laughs> like frozen seafood. So with me, I don't think it was so much seafood because I used to eat like hivas, which is crab. Um, when I was younger and like fish and whatever, but it was so it was more like sushi my first time trying Sushi, which is kind of like seafood because mm -hmm. you know there's seafood in it I ate raw sushi and I was young. I was about I don't know eight years old Yeah, you so gotta have a taste for that. I I literally put the whole entire little sushi in my mouth <laughs> and I was like never again but as I grew up older and I tried sushi that was cooked Man, oh man, yeah. that is like one of my the favorite. The first time I ate it too, it was uh, like raw fish on top, and they just had a bad aftertaste uh -uh. in my oh, mouth yeah. all day. I was just <laughs> tasting it. I was like, oh, never again. I can't lie, the first time I had sushi was barely like maybe two years ago. I had never tried sushi ever before that. And I tried it, and I thought it was extremely good. Yeah. Like, what have I been missing, missing out on this whole time? Been depriving myself of this. But now with the diet, I can't eat that crap anyways. But uh, damn, it's, it's just rice. What if we can't eat it? Carbohydrate. Rice is all carbohydrates. Oh. Um, but since we're talking about food, I think this is a cool thing to ask you guys because your daily vlogs <laughs> is a lot about going out to eat or even just cooking here. Yeah. 
a lot of it is filled with y'all eating, right? Yeah. So I'm curious for anybody else that's uh, here in town or, or thinking of visiting uh, Houston or the Woodlands or anywhere, what would you recommend to somebody that's only going to be here for like a day, wants to go to one of the spots y'all hit? Like, where would you send them? Uh, man, it just depends what they're trying to eat. If they're trying to eat some Mexican food, if they're trying to eat some a steak, barbecue, you know what I'm saying? It just depends. Vietnamese food, it just depends what they're trying to eat. Yeah, so when we eat, we eat like a variety of different types of foods. Um... But man, that yeah, that's a trick question. You got to you got to know what exactly they're wanting to eat. But one of my favorite spots, Vietnamese, my uh good company yeah, for good barbecue. Good company got the barbecue on lock. Good good company and Pizza Tola's on on Shepherd. Oh yeah, Pizza Tola's. We went to both of them oh, barbecue Jesus. spots on the block. Mm. What but else? Steak? Steak. I mean, saltgrass is good steak real quick, but if you want to like a, go, a legit like a five star restaurant. What was that? Steak forty eight or what's it called? Steak forty eight. Steak forty eight. Mm. Maestros is good too, but that's pricey. You're gonna spend three hundred dollars on two people. And Perry's God. for steak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh what else? Mexican? Uh I gotta go to the Alamo house, baby. Oh man. Tacos. The <laughs> Alamo house, you guys. Y'all don't understand. Licky put me on to the Alamo house. And that is one of my favorite That's like spots. the morning time if you hungry in the morning. But if you want like a dinner, then I would go to like El Tiempo. No, I don't like El Tiempo. I like El Tiempo. They got them carnitas, that butter sauce. Mm. Man, hold up. So I like El Tiempo, but I had a bad experience. I've said this previously in our vlogs, and it just, I got food poisoning from El Tiempo. So that kind of ruined it for me. Mm. But it is a good spot to go to. Yeah, they got, they got that. Shrimp with the melted cheese and the tortilla. What's it called? The the queso flameado. Yeah, that with the shrimp. Oh yeah, I like those. Yeah, yeah. that shit go hard. And then the carnitas comes on a little uh, steel. It's like an oven. It ha uh, they bring it to your table and it has like fire in the bottom and it's like burning. I mess around, touch that thing one time. I try to pick the butter sauce up, burn my hand. Oops. Yeah, but it's good, man. Kelly, what, what side of town are you from? The Southwest, South Side. Because when you, when, right now, when you told me that you had never heard of the Alamo House, as y'all call it, I, I just know it as the Alamo. That's, it, it's kind of raised a red flag in my mind because the Alamo is like a, it's been there forever. It's like a North Side staple. And it's it, like it, a corner It was like hella now. small. It was like small. Yeah, it was like a shack. It yeah. used to be a shack where you could barely, like, you were squeezing your way in. Uh, in line over there just right. to get up to the counter like how Laredo is on Washington the, the it, how it's real small and there's a long line that's how that was but Laredo needs to go if Laredo's good too but I don't like waiting in long ass lines so yeah they need, they need to, to go on an upgrade. upgrade yeah so um yeah we don't really have that over there on our side of town like that authentic like you got 30 Mexican ladies in the back literally waking up at 4 or 5 in the morning, cooking, putting in work, mm. making so many different meals. I, I've never seen that on my side of town. So, yeah, it was new to me whenever, um, you know, Lucky introduced it to me. And I realized that it was a north side thing. Like, <laughs> it was a north side thing. But are, are there, like, any south side staples, like cornerstones like that as far as restaurants? No, are? there is like on the, on the southeast, like in Second Ward. Nah, is, uh, that ain't my side of town, well, baby. Yeah, that ain't on my the side southwest, of town. I, I don't think there is. Nah, on not on my side of town. On the southwest, they have more Salvadorans, Hondurans. It's, it's not just Mexicans. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. Got what? A lot of Hondurans he ain't never Salvadorans. in his life lived out there. <laughs> but I know, I know some uh, Salvadorans and Hondurans and uh, other uh, Hispanics that live out there on the southwest. Are nah, you know where I used to go whenever I wanted like some authentic Mexican food. Probably. Real cheese. Nah, well, real cheese is good too, but um, uh, is it Taqueria Michoacana? What is it? Not Michoacana. I don't remember. It's like on Fifty Nine, and is it gets there? I don't remember. I don't but know. the one spot that I used to always eat. With sawgrass, lotus out there, we got the original lotus. So, in the southwest, if you want some boiled shrimp, which is like my favorite, like Cajun food, mm. lotus, the original lotus. Lotus guys. is good. Lotus crab seafood. legs, they got the crabs, the crawfish, the shrimp. Man, when I tell you, I used to eat that every week, and it, you spend a good amount of money there because 
they sell the they shrimp. They have a Lotus on the north side too on Veterans But Memorial. it's nothing Man, like it's the, the original thing. one. They no. sell the same shit. Yeah, but it's not the same. It's just smaller, but it's the same not menu. The same, it's the same menu. They man, got the same thing. Type of the comments. Let this man know. <laughs> if you know about the original Lotus, you know, you guys. They and got shrimp, crab, they got everything. But it tastes same different. Thing. Well, we're not finna argue right now. See, now you got us arguing over food. <laughs> what are some places you would recommend? Uh, if for somebody that's just visiting, a place I would recommend. It's like y'all say, like, what type of food might they be looking for? But me, I try to think of, of a spot that, you know, is off the beaten path that ain't nobody ever just really... Yeah. You know, you gotta, like, accidentally find yeah. yourself there. But there's a place on uh, Cavalcade and uh, North Main, I want to say. Or it's near North Main. It's called uh, Chicago's Italian Pizza or something like that. Um, but you want to talk about the best pizza you could ever find? Yeah. It's literally like, have you ever had pizza in Chicago? Uh-uh. So, have you? No. So, in Chicago, the pizza is like Thick. super fat yeah. pizza, right? And there's this place on Cavalcade. You go there, you order up. You can either order a regular pizza or you can order the Chicago pizza. If you get the Chicago pizza, yeah, I'm talking. Man, about, you make me hungry. I'm talking I know. about man. You better, you better <laughs> take you a pillow, huh? Because once you finish eating that, ooh. I used to like going to Steak and L. Remember Steak and L? Oh yeah. Man, Steak and L was the truth, but they closed them down. It was like they had probably like three or four of them in Houston, mm -hmm. and they closed them all down. And it was the truth. They had the best steak. Lobster tail, salad bar, it was it was good. Never heard of it. Yep. I used to go there and do it big. That's how I came up with the name Steak and Shrimp Records. Cause I'd He's be there sitting here the reminiscing. He's like, yep. Yeah. I remember one time I I don't remember where I got some money from. I got an, a check from something, an advance, one advance on one of my albums or something, and I went there and I had C Guns go with me and he like had the camera and we took it was me and couple of my homies and we brought the cameraman and we ordered like 10 lobsters. We were smoking cigars in there like some bosses. <laughs> we felt like some mob bosses in there. We was all dressed up because we were taking pictures. You know what I'm saying? This was back before Instagram, before people started posting pictures of food on the internet. Right. You know what I'm saying? People didn't do that back then. And I had it on my website. It was called LuckyMakes.com. And I had like 10 lobsters, steaks, shrimp, you know A what I'm saying? A waste of food. Mm. No, I ate it. We ate it. You know what I'm saying? We didn't waste nothing. We ate it. It was their lobster tails. It wasn't 10 whole lobsters. They were just lobster tails. But yeah, we ran up a check. And we had our own little room. And we was, it was a dark, it's like a dark restaurant. It was like it was like one of them mob boss restaurants. That's crazy. I, I think I remember seeing a picture yeah. where you were like that. But speaking of... Uh, I guess your days from the beginning, you mentioned when you first uh, named your Steak and Shrimp Records. Yeah. I found something at the house. Oh, shit. And I was going to bring it to you and show you to see when is the last time you might have seen one of these. <laughs> Ain't no telling when he's bringing out this bag. Check this out. What is this? When's the last time you saw one of these? Oh, oh shit. <laughs> shit. This is even before steak. So, this is before the steak and shrimp records, right here. This was my very first mixtape. Uh, you know what's funny, you guys? It's a, back, uh, it's a box of stickers. No, I'm going to tell you how this whole thing came, about, came about. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you how this whole thing came about. This was before, the, before I had got a check from rapping or anything, so we didn't have no money. And uh, we we're making these. Uh, we, Is that weed in the background? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so we was making. We we're make, recording these at my little. Uh, me and my cousin had a little. <laughs> me and my cousin had a little one bedroom duplex on Leland in Second Ward. Bootleggers stay off our dick. <laughs> <laughs> it legit says bootleggers stay off. Hey, our dick. and so we would record in there, and while we was, I mean, we were done recording, and then. We were burning them on uh, with Chingo. So Chingo Bling was uh, barely starting out too. He was barely making his first mixtape too. And we were both recording there. And then uh, I went and used uh, their scanner and their, uh, cause we were gonna make, a, it was time to make the cover. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna make the cover. And he was like, well, we can just take a picture of you. And I was like, no, nah, I wanted it to have like, uh, Cause my name was Lucky, and I was like, I wanted to be like a cigarette pack with the Lucky cigarette turned upside down, and be like, you know, the Lucky cigarette. 
So it's called Lucky. And he was like, man, well, uh, how are we going to get that picture? So he had a scanner. So I just pulled the new pours out of my pocket and I had a bag of weed in the other pocket. And I just put the bag of weed down, the cigarettes on top, you know what I'm saying? And he scanned it in the scanner and put it in the computer. And that's how we got the cover for the mixtape, you know what I'm saying? What year do you think this was? This was like, this was before I did the, this was before I even got signed to Dope House because this mixtape right here is what made them call me and it was like, yo, uh, you're making some noise out there come through. Yeah, I was listening to this on the way up here. I hadn't heard this since it probably came out either. And I was listening to it. And uh, one of the bars you said on there was something to the effect of, uh, I just started working on my new album and, and it's going to be called You Already Know. Yeah, that was, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was before uh, I dropped that album with Dope House. Yeah, they, I remember they called me. So, But that was after I did the Lucky Me album. So I did the Lucky Me album. And it only sold like 1,500 copies. And if I was independent and I owned it, I would have probably made 10, 15,000 off it. But since I was signed to the label, I didn't make shit. Mm. And so I was just, you know, trying to go back to the drawing board, figure out what I could do. So mm. that's when I recorded that uh, mixtape. And then uh, Carlos and his brother heard about it and they they called me and they were like, yo, we want to get you to do an album over here at Dope House. So I was like, bet, come on. Do you remember any of the songs on it? No. Uh, the very first song it plays is uh, Where My Player May Mess. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's where that, uh, that, okay, when they called me and they said, yo, we heard your song, Where My Player May Mess. Get. Bash, okay, so Bash heard the song first and he wanted to do a remix on his album and he did. That song is also on the, we on, what was his album called? On The Cool? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. he had an album called On The Cool. That's crazy. So we put that, so I took my second verse off and then Bash put a verse on there and we put it on his album, On The Cool. And yeah, that's but yeah, that song where my player made Mexicans at. That's what. Got hold on, so how long do y'all know each other? Um, uh, I didn't know Coast back then. Or did I know you back then? Yeah, we had already met back then. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to think of a year. I, I think we said it was like 2002 is when we kind of first met each other. Yeah, that album came out had to come out in because my album you already know came out 2003, yeah. so that had to be 2001 or 2002. Yeah. So, so well, how many years is that? Uh, like eight, Se 17, seventeen years. Damn. Seventeen years. Uh, yeah. That's almost my whole lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, no, you you know I wanted to tell y'all a little story earlier today. I was cleaning out his restroom drawers and he had a full box of cigarettes in there, which he doesn't smoke cigarettes no more. So I was like, can I throw these away? So when I saw that, I was like, that's crazy. And what was his answer? Yeah. Oh, yeah like, they've been in there for like a whole year. I forgot they was in there. I had two packs, a pack of blacks. You know those black, the cigarettes, the black? Yeah. It says black. Yeah. Those and some Newports in there. But they've been there forever. I mean, I've seen them before, but I'm just like, I'm cleaning it out. Like, you've had these in here like forever. So. I don't even know how I used to smoke cigarettes all the time. I like cannot that. stand like that's like a my, deal breaker for me. I, I cannot. Feel like I'd be out of breath. If I try to smoke a Newport right now, I'd probably be choking. <laughs> I cannot. I don't like cigarettes. I don't like the smell of cigarettes. I used to try and smoke cigarettes. I don't know why. I knew I never liked it and I just, I can't do it. Like, I would always tell him like, I, I'm not going to be with you if you smoke cigarettes. Mm. That's like a deal breaker for me. Yeah. Yeah, I started smoking cigarettes real at a real young age. Well, I was probably like fifteen or sixteen. We had this conversation the other day because he was telling me, "Man, I don't even know how I used to smoke them." And then he told me, "I really, when I smoked them, I really thought I was gonna smoke for the rest of my life." Yeah, when I was like, when I smoked cigarettes, I thought that was just something I was gonna do forever. I didn't ever think I would quit. Mm. So I'm glad he did. <laughs> but that's crazy, you know, for you to have that mentality. Like, I mean. I know people that have smoked for Cause years. Because my, like my grandpa smoked, and he was old, and I would always, you know what I'm saying? So I just thought I was going to be like my grandpa and <laughs> smoke till I'm old, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. And I'm you know what I've noticed, quick. too, is a lot of times people that smoke, it's it's like a, a like they get it from a family member. Yeah. Like It's like a habit that they pick up from either their mom, their dad, their grandma, or just somebody in their home. Or in their daily life, that yeah, and I think all the men cigarettes. in my family they all smoked when you know what I'm saying. When I was growing up, the older men in my family always smoked. My uncles, my grandpa, yeah. my dad smoked hella weed. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and so like you're conditioned as a kid to 
be cool with the smell of cigarette smoke around you. Yeah. And then when you become an adolescent or whatever and it, it gets offered to you, you're like, Psh, yeah. I've been around this my whole life. Yeah, exactly. You, mean, you know what I'm saying? And that's, I, that's, you're probably right in the sense that it comes from a family member because like my mom was, is, uh, had always been real heavy in the cigarette. I think my mom started smoking when she was like 13 yeah. or something like that. All the way up until uh, when she had me and I was growing up. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I fell into the same thing too. And I was, man, I was like a pack a day smoker, pack and a half sometimes smoker. I was on it hard, like yeah. But nowadays, I'm like I'm like Kelly, where I can't be around the oh, smell. Oh yeah, I don't even like the smell of it now. Yeah. I remember, oh, Carlos used to get mad about smoking cigarettes. He oh, hated yeah. the smell. Who's smoking that cigarette? Who's so lucky to get out of here with that damn cigarette? <laughs> he ready to kick somebody out the damn studio. Yeah, I can't do it. I cannot do it. Like, I don't judge nobody, but looking at it from, like, a medical perspective, it's really, really bad for you. It kills you, like... It eventually deteriorates your lungs. It's just like there's no real. It's just real, a habit because it really don't do nothing it's for no you. It's no real don't, benefit you know from it. Like I know a lot of people say, "Oh, I need a cigarette," but for what? Mm-hmm. For what? If you really think about it, for what? Yeah. It's just a habit, like like you said, and uh, I challenge y'all that smoke cigarettes to slowly give it up. Next yeah, time, one time, next one time, time someone told me, oh, I was like, I had some, I, I was smoking cigarettes with someone, and I said, man, I hadn't smoked in a week, like a whole week. And he told me, he was like, man, if you you ain't smoked in a whole week, you can quit. Yeah. And that stuck in my head, like, damn, you're right. Like, I don't need to be smoking these damn cigarettes. Fuck. So next time you think you need a cigarette, just try to calm down, take a deep breath, and try to have that self-control and tell yourself, I can, I can slowly stop, because... And two, I used it's to not drink so a lot. Good for you. I used to drink a lot. So whenever I would drink, be drunk or drinking alcohol, that's when I would really want to smoke a cigarette. Oh, oh yeah. he would get me so mad. That's why he had that pack of cigarettes. One time he got <laughs> drunk and he went to the store and bought one. And I was like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, it's just one. I said, nah. And I ended up, that time I had grabbed his pack and I broke them in half, threw them away. I was like, you ain't finna do this. Huh. You not finna do that. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> So that's my take on cigarettes, but that was funny because I saw the cigarette and he just said that he had a pack of weed in one pocket mm-hmm. and the cigarettes in the other one. Yeah, that's how we made it cover that. And that's album. funny. Oh, play a baby, man, skip that. Well, lucky, how old were you when you first uh, started drinking? Shit, oh god, man, I was probably like, <laughs> the, oh, I remember the first time I drank a sip of beer. It was me and my cousin, and we was probably like six or seven years old. And my uh, grandpa would drink his beer every day, and then he fell asleep, and he had a beer still. He was asleep on the couch, but he had his beer right there, like on the coffee table. Mm-hmm. And me and my little cousin was up, and we uh, we just got the beer, we drank it. <laughs> and man, it tasted that. It was like hot beer. It was like, you know what I'm saying? Like a hot old can of beer. And I was like, ugh. But that was the first time I... Can you remember a point in your life where you drank, and it just clicked in your head that... Okay, I drink now. Uh, Damn, no. I do. I don't. I but I do remember being around. Uh, my parents were really young when <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So they were really young. My dad was really young when he had me. He was 16 when he had me. So he had a lot of friends that would come around. And, I mean, there it was always alcohol, and they would always party, and there were always there was always alcohol around mm-hmm. growing up. So I thought as soon as I got. A little bit older, I was going to drink for sure. It was like a no-brainer, like, yeah, you're going to drink. You know what I'm saying? That's just what grown people do. Yeah. So, uh, it had to be in my teens. I was a teenager. I don't remember the exact what age, but I was a teenager for sure. I was in junior high. It was before high school. I was in junior high, and, like, my friends would have, like, an older brother or older sister, and they'd go buy us beer from the store mm. and we'd be drinking. My first time drinking, it was whiskey. Oh, you went with the hard stuff first. I never really liked beer like that. Yeah. So that's what's crazy because now that you're like asking him, I remember it was like when quinceañeras used to have the bottle as the like memory that you take home. Right. So we had took it home and one time, I don't know how I convinced my sister and my aunt, like, let's just drink. And I'm like super young. So they're like drinking and I'm just sneaking it into my Coke. How old are you? 
Uh, right now? No, no, at the time. Uh, I don't even want to say. Oh, <laughs> I was like nine, you guys. <laughs> wow. And I literally peer pressured them to drink at the house. And it was like a whole shit show, you guys. Like, my sister had got drunk. She was about like 15. Mm. And my aunt, she was old. She was old enough to know better. But, <laughs> you know, crazy. she was still young. She was still young. She wasn't that old. But she was old enough to drink. And I... As, like answering your question to him, can you remember when you really thought you well you knew that you were gonna drink? Yeah. I was probably like twelve, thirteen. And I remember like I was just so into Patron. I don't know no. why. Oh no, I can't do Because I used to be I used to be in the clubs at that age. Which was crazy. Very it, crazy. Yep. I used to I used to be at the Mexican clubs, you know, I was like dancing all that tribal, <laughs> the like cumbias and stuff. And it was just normal for you to ask somebody, Can you buy me and my friends a shot? And they would do it. Like they didn't care. Mm. So it, it, that was like a major thing for me. Like it was I was always into hard liquor more than beer. Yeah. It wasn't until I, I got older, like 19, 18, I started drinking beer because it was like, I felt like alcohol, like liquor, was always available to me. Mm. I know when I turned 21, I was, uh, that's when for sure I was drinking all the time because I was able to go to the store, liquor store, and buy it myself. My thing with beer was always like micheladas or like the chile and the salt and the lemon on the side. Like that's the mm. only way I really drank a beer. What about you? I, to be honest, I have never in my life drank a beer. What? what? <laughs> okay, okay. So, yes. I. Baby, I, go buy it. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I, mean, I don't want to say obviously, but I have before tried drinking beer, but I have never been drank able a whole beer, to drink bottle of beer, whole can an of beer. entire beer myself. What? Because they say it's like, well, it's not like coffee, but it's like coffee in the sense that it's an acquired taste. Yeah. I have never been able to acquire a taste for beer. Yeah, you don't just drink it's it just, for taste. It's nasty. You just swallow it. Yeah. It's pretty nasty. But as far as drinking, like when I knew that I was going to just, I, I drink now, uh, it didn't happen until later in life, later in life. Because like I said, I never really messed with beer and therefore I really didn't think I would even like liquor in that sense. Just because I, beer gave me a bad taste. Um... Maybe, maybe like 20, 24, when I was about 24 years old is when I found out. You I could good be a child. <laughs> when you found out about the Hennessy. Oh, yes. man. <laughs> yes. Hanging out with Eddie DeVille. Yeah. There was a point in time when I, like, I was about 24 years old. Me and, he- me and Eddie was hanging out like tough, like all the time. You, you couldn't find Eddie without Cokes. Yeah. Um. And yeah, Eddie Eddie always kept a, a bottle of Hennessy in his apartment. And anytime I would go over, he would pour himself a glass and he uh like a couple times he poured me a glass just because he wanted to be uh what uh what's polite, the, cordial. Yeah. So I was like, Well, I don't wanna turn him down. I don't yeah. wanna I don't wanna deny him his, his hospitality. Yeah, I don't wanna <laughs> deny his, his hospitality. hospitality. So I take I take the drink. And you're like, hmm, it's pretty yeah, good. I was, like, I was like, hold up, this ain't nothing like the beer taste that I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. So another question. Hold if, on, so you weren't you didn't drink Hennessy till you were 24 years old? Yeah, like Damn. I really, I really was not a big drinker. Yeah, at so, all. So I'm a dark type of person now. You know, I figured out that clear gets me crazy and dark gets me like real chill, mellow, real like laid back. But my question is, are you a dark? You do you mix your Hennessy with Coke or do you mix it with Sprite? I prefer mixing it with Seven Up more mm-hmm. than anything. I, I I enjoy, and I don't even want to just say Hennessy because uh, I'll just say cognac. Yeah, dark. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I prefer it with Seven Up, but there's the coast to cola. You know what I mean? You just mm-hmm. take Hennessy and mix it with, with with regular Coke or or. or Shit, I mean, even root beer. Yeah, because th- when I was introduced to it or when I first started drinking dark, I remember it was, like, introduced. Like, it's just the original way, right? Yeah. Coke. Yeah. Coke and dark. And then I kind of one day tried it with Sprite, and I was like, damn, mm-hmm. it's such a huge Man, difference. I, I love it. on ice. Yes. Yeah. You can't oh, even hang. No, I know. <laughs> I would, I'd be drunk, but I would, yeah. that's how I would drink it, on ice. And the best thing about dark liquor and I feel like we're not being as positive 
as we should be because we're over here talking about uh, how we like our liquor. Anyways, I, I find it. Hey, we grown. Yeah. I, I, I find it like in the winter weathers when it's cold outside, that's the best time to drink dark because it'll warm you up, especially cognac. Cognac. It'll warm you Relax up. You. Yeah, make your body feel toasty. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta know how to when to stop. Yeah. See, my problem is I just keep on. After I feel warm, I'll be like, let me get another, let me get another, yeah. let me get another. And by the time you know it, I'm lit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what? The, uh, in the last video that we did together, and y'all are asking about embarrassing stories, and I couldn't really think of any. Oh God. Because I don't really have any. Oh, where you I you up came up with car. one. Well, yeah, okay, so that was embarrassing, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I was thinking. That once upon a time, there was a, a me and Stunner were supposed to go do a show in Minneapolis. Yeah. Right. And we had uh, plane tickets were already bought and everything. And I was gonna pick up Stunner from his house, and we were gonna go to the airport. While I'm on my way to pick up Stunner, he hits me up and says, "Vanessa is having the baby. I can't go." And uh. And uh, his little boy Romeo, if y'all are watching, uh, that's that's who she was having the baby. Um, so I, I went to the airport by myself. Normally, I never travel alone, right? You got drunk on the plane. No. I, I, I go to Minneapolis by myself, never met the dude that's, that's throwing the show. You I, went and did the whole show by yourself all the way to the <laughs> But I go out there. I think I've done that one time yeah. in Kansas. I go out there, and when I land, the dude picks me up from the airport, and he's got a taco truck on, like, 26-inch rims. Yeah. He picks me up, and my first reaction to this is, that's weird. <laughs> he must think that this is what I'm used to for him to come pick me up in a ride like this. Yeah. Whatever. I get in the taco truck with him. And he did dri- it make tacos. No, nah. it was just a taco truck. It was a taco truck. Uh, I think it had graphics on the side, like it Why was, like if they the sold hell tacos. Would he be riding it? I have no idea. <laughs> there was no kitchen or nothing inside of it. Yeah, you meet some crazy people on the road. Yeah, so he picks me up and he's driving me to my hotel. And like I said, I don't know anybody there. He's like, I got you something, and he handed me a bottle of Hennessy. And uh, he drops me off at the hotel. So I'm at the hotel. It ain't nobody I could call. Yeah. It's like, hey, let's 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 kick Turn it while up. I'm here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's go uh, to the mall or whatever. It ain't nobody I can call. It's just me at the hotel with a bottle of Hennessy. So I crack it open and I start drinking. By the time the evening comes around, this dude comes back and picks me up in the taco truck and yet again. Wasted. Takes me to the to the venue. I get up on stage. I can't remember a single word of any of my songs. And I'm just like, as soon as the music, in my mind, I'm like, as soon as the music plays, it's all going to come back to me. It did not come back to me. That happened to me before, too. Yeah, so. A few times. Yeah, and and there was, like, I had put some songs into my set list that I was going to try to experiment with, with that audience. Oh, shit. So I didn't know none of it. I was up there, I was slurring everything, I was mumbling everything, I was pretending like I was rapping, just doing the hand motions and stuff like that. It was horrible. But the crowd was still in. The crowd knew everything that I was that was going on. Yeah. They knew I was wasted. Yeah. <laughs> they was like, "Hey, and they was still he turned me on. up." <laughs> they was happy I was there. Yeah. yeah. And so after after I got done with my with my set, I got off the stage and everybody came up to me. They was hugging me. They're like, "Oh boy, you a fool, you a yeah. fool." And I'm like, "Yeah, hey, yeah, you know, you know." When it's time to go back to the hotel, I'm super wasted at this point. At this point, I had drank the entire bottle. <laughs> By myself, the dude throws me back into the uh, taco, truck. taco truck. We're driving down uh, uh, downtown Minneapolis, and there's a, just like in Houston, there's all the stoplights. I'm not. I'm in the back of the taco truck, but it's got the sliding door you on the side. Fell out. No, I ain't fall out. Oh. I ain't fall out, but I'm so loosey and goosey and whatever you want to call it. I'm. I'm. I'm hanging my feet out of the, like I'm sitting where the sliding door opens with my feet hanging out as we're driving down uh, Minneapolis. Every red light we come to, I hop out into the middle of the street (laughs) and the car pulling up in the next lane will pull up 
And I started like, what's up, bitch? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like talking shit. Like what you trying to do? You, you, you looking at this taco truck? You got a problem with this taco truck? You know what I'm saying? Just talking shit. Oh, God. And it was this poor guy, man. He just, he couldn't get out of his lane. Yeah. And it, we kept hitting consistent red lights. Yeah, the same dude. The same, yeah, same thing. So we would go to the next light and it would turn red. Now this dude is stopping way behind us. Like, he don't want to come up because he already knows I'm finna act an ass yeah. when he pulls up too close. So he's way back there and I hop out again. Like, man, you a bitch. <laughs> but I understand. You see but a guy standing, you see a guy out here and I'm drunk and I'm hopping out of taco truck and I'm screaming at you. I understand you don't want to pull up. Like, I'm, I'm talking logically, but in a confrontational kind right. of way. It's weird. And uh, then ultimately we get further down the road and I'm, I go up to this dude and I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm the not, same dude? Yeah. Because <laughs> I was giving him hell the entire the entire little, little way down the street, man. And That's then, funny. And then finally I got back to the hotel and I went upstairs and I threw up, went to bed, and I never spoke him such a thing ever again. Oh, man. Yeah, that's the bad thing about liquor yeah. or alcohol. You never know when it's gonna creep up on you. So, like, like you said, you gotta know when mm -hmm. to stop. Yeah, man. So, I, I don't forgot some words. And then whenever I was in Arizona one time and I got drunk like that, me and Big Joey, and we, when we're on stage and he's supposed to be my hype man, he if I don't know the words, he don't know the words. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just start freestyling over my songs that are playing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's playing my song with the lyrics on it, and we rapping something totally different, freestyling. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Just had a freestyle <laughs> session on stage. Have, my, you, have you ever fallen off stage? Oh, yeah. She, I, I fell, asked him this, too. I fell off stage one time. I fell off stage. Uh, uh, well, it wasn't off stage. <laughs> it was actually, okay, so it was at this club, and there was, oh, a, there was a stage, and then there was, like, a little... <laughs> Like a little, not table, but oh. this little thing where people in the crowd can put their drinks on. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? It, w it went out. It was like a tea. You know what I'm saying? So oh, I right. tried to walk on that thing where everybody was putting their drinks on. <laughs> and bam. Fell off that motherfucker. Oh, like, God. I was drunk. I was drunk. <laughs> fell off. And everybody was like, ah. And then I just got up, got back on stage, <laughs> and kept rapping. You know what I'm saying? But that was embarrassing. Oh. Yeah. It was embarrassing. I remember the club owner was upset, like the, the promoter or the club owner, whoever it was, they didn't want to pay me because they were like, man, he was all drunk and he didn't even do a good show and they still had to pay me though. Yep. Yeah, so they were upset about having to get, come off that money. <laughs> you showed up, you got, you, they got to pay you. It don't matter how your performance goes, as long as you show up, they got to pay you. All right, you guys, I think it's time for us to wrap this one up. Yep, tune in next Sunday, same time, same place, same, what, what are we going to call it, man? Uh, Sunday School Podcast, what are we going to call it, man? Let me get I don't some know. Of them. Can I get some of them m &Ms? We'll think about it, but thank you so much, folks.